I'm David Jenkins. I'm a physician. Um, I'm a faculty member at the University of Toronto uh, in the Department of Nutritional Sciences in the Faculty of Medicine and Director of the Risk Factor Modification Centre of St Michael's Hospital, which is a university-affiliated hospital. If one really wants to, to talk about the glycemic index, which I think is, is, is an interest, um, this came about because simply our group were, were concerned that different foods raised the blood glucose level differently. What were the reasons? Fibre, as I, I said, fibre is my historic background and that was one of the reasons. Here was something that wasn't actually absorbed from the food but actually altered the way the food was processed in the gut. So that it wasn't simply the amount of carbohydrate that you took in that made a, a dose response effect on the blood glucose. Um, it was many things within the food, the way it was packaged, that determined uh, how the blood glucose level rose. And so um, our group felt that we should um, index it. Uh, as George Bernard Shaw said, um, indexing is a great leveller. Um, so what it did is allowed us to level things, therefore to have a level playing field to compare different foods. Uh, and that's what it allowed us to do. It allowed us then to, to, to construct diets which would tend to raise the blood glucose level more or less. Uh, less would be the thing that one wants for diabetes. Uh, more may be something if you want a quick lift uh, and some, some, some quick surge of blood glucose to uh, run away from the saber-toothed tiger or whatever you're going to do. So um, for us this was a great interest and something we've been pursuing in the years since and many others have pursued this and made tremendous advances. I can't say it's an, it's, it's an easy field, it's a field that's been fraught with controversy. Um, and the controversy is this, that foods are different, that foods are processed differently uh, in terms of manufacturing, um, foods are grown differently, uh, the, the starch, the sugars, the fibre um, all react differently, so it's, quite, it's, it's a difficult horse to ride you can be thrown off quite easily. But I think um, the, the body of, of evidence that we have is that certainly those people who, have, who are troubled by high blood glucose rises, um, those of us who, um, for our height, have too much around our middle, uh, people who have insulin resistance, these sort of people benefit, we feel, um, from reducing the glycemic impact of the diet um, and there the glycemic index is useful. I think there's been a lot of confusion too with the glycemic index. Um, early on we showed that if you had 50 grams of carbohydrate as carrots um, this would be better than, uh, than uh, this would be this would be a, give you a higher rise um, than many of the fat-rich candies uh, that people consume, uh, various bars of various sorts. So, let us put it this way. Um, you can get a low glycemic index food which is low for the wrong reasons. Uh, there's too much fat um, and uh, you delay gastric emptying and you've got a high calorie food. That would not be considered to be, if you like, a healthy low glycemic index food, um, especially if it's full of trans and saturated fats. I don't think uh, the glycemic index is anything more than one of the indicators of a food. And I think that the thing that, that, that would uh, trouble me greatly is when people use the glycemic index as the only thing uh, that's important in a food. It is not, it is one of the many characteristics, it's simply one of the physiological classifications of the food. One would ask, is this the time for change? I think that's the question people often ask. Uh, you're doing a lot of research, do we have the clarity to make change? And I think that if one was to to answer that question fairly, 
um, we don't have the data at present to make detailed change. But I think we do have leads that it would be probably unwise not to follow. And I think those leads would be um, that one has a, a vast uh, cornucopia of plant foods, um, which most people haven't tapped into. Um, they've gone for very processed foods, they've gone for a lot of animal products. And I think these could be very well exchanged for going back in time um, to uh, the more plant-based diets that we've, that traditionally uh, human beings have been eating. Um, and traditional foods um, with their um, with their full complement of nutrients. I think that's how one would want to look at it. Their full complement of nutrients, their fiber, their vegetable proteins, um, their oils. Uh, these foods, I think, uh, come from a time when diabetes and cardiovascular disease was almost unknown amongst us. Um, and I think we should go back to them. And I think there are good scientific reasons, um, scientific leads, if you like, scientific leads that point in that direction. And I think most people would probably agree with that deep down. Most scientists would. They'd disagree about whether uh, different sorts of fats have different sorts of effects. Uh, they would differ in terms of which sorts of fibre should be the predominant one. They would differ in terms of what the protein sources would be. But I think in general there's a, there's a general feeling that we need to go uh, to um, the back to the plant foods that we've, we've neglected uh, we should reintroduce these rigorously into the diet and, uh, and, and, and move on from there. We as human beings are tremendously gifted. Um, we've, we've got big brains and we've also got perhaps more important than our brain is our digestive tract. We have a digestive tract that can devour almost anything. You can live like an Eskimo on uh, whale um, blubber and seal meat um, or you can live in Gujarat, India and be a vegetarian and live on dal um, and chickpeas and vegetables and you can be very healthy. So we have tremendous ability to eat whatever we want. Therefore I think um, we almost have a duty to eat environmentally and I think the role of nutrition for the future uh, is to chart the most humane way that we can eat that will give us the maximum health, rather than simply look at what we want to eat and, uh, and promote that. In other words, we can't just eat what we want to eat. I think we have to eat what we can produce sustainably, humanely, uh, and environmentally uh, friendly. Um, and I think that's the role of nutrition in the, in the future. And so I think that I, I'm, I'm more going towards looking at plant foods, making sure that these foods are safe. I think that's the thing that, I, that, that we have to do, make sure they're safe and maximize their health benefits.